So we're going to finish our Bible studies for the year with with Book of Joel, short prophecy, uh, but important. And um, we'll talk a little bit once we're done with this about what we're going to begin in the uh, new ecclesiastical year. Since Pascha is so late, we probably won't have an opportunity to reconvene before summer. Um, so we'll go through Joel. Just a couple of notes on Joel again context-wise, Joel was uh, a later contemporary of Isaiah, Amos, Hosea, and Micah. Uh, he prophesied to Israel after the fall of Jerusalem during the Babylonian captivity. So um, he's kind of just right at the end as just as the Babylonians and Persians and, and the Syrians are attacking. Um, and, and after everything falls, he's he goes in and talks about it. So you've got um, a little bit of uh, like many of the prophets or all the prophets, we get a little bit of, of history that's happening and he's using the history at the time, but also it's talking about the future times. Uh, and we'll talk about it, not just, not just for the church, but also for the end of days um, as well. So kind of interesting. Uh, and there's some things that I think you'll recognize um, and be familiar to you. Uh, much like last week if somebody wants to read chapter one um go ahead and start <laughs> the word of the lord came to joel the son of I do well. i'm sorry i'm still having some eyesight problems so i've got to focus in on words here, so give me a minute. <laughs> hear this you elders and give ear all of you inhabiting the land have such things happened in your days or in the days of your fathers, tell your children about this, and your children to their children, and their children to the next generation. What the caterpillars have left is eaten by the grasshoppers, and what the grasshoppers have left is eaten by the locusts, and what the locusts have left is infected with red blight. Get sober, you who are drunk from your wine, and we mourn all of you who drink wine. For joy and gladness are removed from your mouth. For a nation strong and a numberless came up against my hand. His teeth are the teeth of a lion, and his molars those of a young lion. He laid waste my vine and my splintered my fig tree. He diligently, he diligently searched out and uprooted my vine, peeling off its outer bark. Mourn before me, mourn than a virgin, me more than a virgin, bride clothed with sackcloth with the husband of her youth. The meat offering and the drink offering are removed from the house of the Lord. Mourn, you, mourn your priests who have who serve at the altar. For the fields languish and the land mourns, for the grain withers, the wine is dried up, and the olive oil is scarce. The farmers are exhausted. Mourn for the sake of your fields of wheat and barley, for the harvest from the fields have been lost. The vine is shriveled up, and the fig trees are scarce in number. The pomegranate and the palm tree, the apple tree, and all the trees of the field are withered, for they put to shame the delight of the sons of men. Gird yourselves with sackcloth and wail. You priest, mourn, you who serve at the altar. Go and sleep in sackcloth, you who minister unto God. For the grain offering and the drink offering are withheld from the house of your God. Sanctify a fast. Call a solemn assembly. Gather all the elders and all the people of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry out fervently to the Lord. Alas, alas, alas. For the day of the Lord draws near and it will come as misery upon misery. The food is complementarily destroyed before your eyes. Joy and gladness are removed from the house of your God. The heifers are, use, are restless in their stalls, and the storehouses are empty. The wine presses are broken down. The grain is withered. What will we store up for ourselves? The herds of cattle groan because there are, was no pasture, and the flocks of sheep are no more. O Lord, I will cry out to you, for fire has devoured and pleasant places of the and the, devoured the pleasant places of the wilderness and a flame burned all the trees of the field. 
and the cattle of the field also look up to you, because the brooks are dried up, and the fire has devoured the pleasant places of the wilderness. Okay, so you can imagine after the destruction of Jerusalem, you know, what it would look like after warfare and desolation. So the people at the time are hearing this and saying, yes, this is what we're seeing. But there's several other things there that kind of allude to, to things in the future. As, as we say, every prophecy is not for that generation, but for future generations. Um, the first verse is just to introduce who's speaking. And then hear this, you elders, and give ear. Those are the presbyters, elders, the same word. Um, and, and then uh, all you would have to the land have, have such things happened in your days or in the days of your fathers. Um, he's saying, well, you know, this is a, a tremendous thing. So it's not just that Jerusalem was destroyed, but consider the crucifixion, consider the age of martyrdom. Uh, of the church, consider, you know, all the intrigue of Byzantium, consider communism, all the things that have befallen the church over the course of history. Um, and, and of course, everybody in that generation is saying, have you ever heard of anything like this before, right? So um, it, it can address lots of different things. Uh, the four uh, Attacks, you know, or the caterpillars and the grasshopper and the the um, the fathers of the church talk about three, two different things. There, it can either be the three Assyrian kings that, that came to Jerusalem and, and the one Babylonian king that ultimately defeated them, or it could be as one of the fathers says, the Babylonians, the Persians, the Greeks, and the Romans that conquered the Palestine over the course of history. Um, either way. Uh, it's just referring to the destruction there. Verse six, the passions are powerful. Let's see. Talk about get sober. Verse six, for a nation strong and numberless came up against my land. His teeth are the teeth of a lion and the molars are those of a young lion. And the fathers are saying that, you know, that that's kind of what happens to us in our passions and our temptations. They're very powerful and numberless. Um, and then verse eight, mourn before me, more than a virgin bride clothed, uh, symbolic of the crucifixion there. And nine, the meat offering and the drink offering are removed from the house of the Lord. Mourn you priests, you who serve at the altar. Uh, when the church is persecuted, the sacraments cannot be performed. We saw that, you know, even recently within uh, communism, that a lot of people could not get married or be baptized or whatnot. Uh, 13, gird yourself with sackcloth and wail, you priests, mourn, you who serve at the altar. Uh, the clergy pray for all the people. And, you know, when, when we pray, we're praying not just for those here present, but we're praying for everyone. And that includes non-Orthodox, non-Christian, whatever, um, because, you know, again, we want all to be saved, we want all to uh, be okay. Um, and 14, you know, in this morning, um, sanctify fast, we're entering the great fast, so very apropos that as we enter the fast, uh, we are calling, we're sanctifying a fast, we're calling a fast. Um, imagine that, time for repentance. Uh, and then 19 and 20, so all this kind of woe and bad stuff, 19 and 20 kind of, the, the chapter finishes off with a little bit of um, potential positive, place all the trust and faith in God, um, much like will happen with us with the fast. We, we mourn during the fast, we repent during the fast, and then Pascha comes and we re rejoice. So, <clears throat> okay. Chapter two. Sound the trumpet in Zion, make a proclamation in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the earth be confounded, for the day of the Lord is near. A day of darkness and gloominess, a day of cloud and of dense fog. About daybreak, a people both strong and great in number will be spread upon the mountains, the lights of whom have never been, nor will ever come after them, not even for many generations. Before them is a consuming fire, and behind them a flame set ablaze. Before them, the land is a paradise of splendor, but behind them is a desolate plain. No one will be able to escape them. Their outward appearance is as the appearance of horses, and thus as horsemen they will pursue. They shall bound upon the tops of the mountains as the sound of chariots, 
as the sound of a flame of fire devouring straw, as a great number of mighty men setting themselves in a battle array. Before them, the people will be crushed. Every face will be as blackness of a cauldron. As warriors, they shall march quickly and they will climb the walls like men of war. Everyone shall march in formation. They will never break their ranks. They will not separate from their comrades and will march weighed down with their arms. And though they fall by their arrows, even so they will not be stopped. They will seize the city and run on the wall. They will climb into the houses and enter the windows as do thieves. Before their presence, the land will be confounded. The sky will be shaken. The sun and the moon will grow dark and the stars will hold back their brightness. Because the day of the Lord is great and exceedingly glorious, the Lord shall utter his voice before the face of his army. For his army is numberless and the works of his words are mighty. Who shall resist? Now, says the Lord your God, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and wailing and with mourning. Rend your heart and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate. He is long-suffering and plenteous in mercy and repents of evils. Who knows if he will return and change his mind, if he will leave a blessing behind him, even an offering and a drink offering to the Lord our God. Sound the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, call out the elders, and gather the nursing infants. Let the bridegroom go out of his bedchamber and the bride out of her bridal chamber. Between the porch and the altar, the priests of the altar, ministering to the Lord, will each be weeping and will say, O Lord, spare your people, do not give your inheritance to reproach, that the Gentiles should root over them, lest they should say among the Gentiles, where is their God? But the Lord was zealous for his land and spared his people. And the Lord answered his people and said, Behold, I send you wheat, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied with them. I will no longer make you reproach among the nations. And I will drive away the army. I will, and I will drive the army from the north away from you, and I shall force them into a dry land. I will drown his face in the eastern sea and his back in the western sea. Its stench and foul smell will rise up because he has done powerful works. O oh, land, be good, be of good courage, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord has done great things. Take courage, you beasts of the field, for the plains of the wilderness have budded, and the trees bear their fruit. And again the vine and the fig tree yield their full potency. And you, children of Zion, be glad and rejoice in the Lord your God, for he gives food that is right for you. And he will shower you as before with the early and the late rain. The threshing floor shall be full of wheat, and the presses of wine and olive oil will overflow. And I will restore you to the years the grasshopper and the locust have eaten, and for the blight and the caterpillar, even for my great army, which I sent against you. You will eat abundantly and be satisfied, and will praise the name of the Lord your God for what he has so wondrously done unto you. And my people will not be put to shame forever. Then you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel, that I am the Lord your God, and there is no other but me, and at no time will my people be put to shame forever. Thank you. Okay, so chapter two is kind of split up into three different sections, and I'll actually explain this four different sections in a minute, but when we get to that, but you, know, you have the first 12, uh, 11 verses or so that talks about the day of the Lord, and then go ahead and kind of goes back to chapter one of you know, create a fast, mourn, lament, repent. And then verse 18 goes back to more of a upbeat thing. Um, you know, so the day of the Lord is judgment day. And so, you know, first chapter one, we were talking more about, again, crucifixion and persecution. Um, judgment day is, is you know, the, the day of the Lord. And so there's when we uh, rejoice. And notice it's always it, it, the day. And it's not days, it's day, because it's eternal. It's one one eternal day. Um, and then it goes into, ch chapter two goes into this um, military description, which, of course, just happened in Jerusalem, so that's very familiar. Uh, they didn't need a whole lot of, uh, to remind themselves of that. But we have to remember, if we're not, it's not talking about 
the battle that just took place is talking about the battle that we experienced, right? The church triumphant and church militant. We talk about those two two terms, right? The church triumphant are those who have who have won, fought the good fight, and won the crown. The church militant means we we're the soldiers. We're battling right now, and it's not it's the world that we're battling. It's the demons that we're battling. It's you know so um, so we go through that that imagery, um, <clears throat> and then let's see verse ten here. Before the presence of the land will be confounded and the sky will be shaken, the sun and moon will go dark. Uh, multiple prophecies refer to these events. We, we've heard this in the prophecies, and, and then Jesus also recounts it. So when, when he says that, this is where he's getting it from. It's familiar imagery to the people. Um, and then verse 11 here, and this is kind of how we know we're talking about the end of times, judgment day. And because the day of the Lord, again, one day, the day of the Lord is great and exceedingly glorious. The Lord shall utter his voice before the face of his army, for his army is numberless, and the works of his words are mighty, who shall resist? And so that's, you know, the, the, the saints that are his, the army. But just as, <clears throat> just as the world was created by a word, let there be light and things like that, and it was created by word, so too will it come to a close in the same way with the word, Okay. And so, we'll guide, and so one of the things that the priest says as he's putting on the IAR, the little covering that I put around my, my shoulders for the great entrance, um, arise, O God, to the sound of the trumpet, the archangel's cry of command. At the end of the world will come, with, we'll hear a voice, and we will know. So That's why he says, don't kid yourself. Other people will tell you yeah. the end of the world is coming. It's not going to be subtle. The stars are going to fall out of the sky. Everything is going to be upside down, and you're going to know. It's, it's a new creation. Going to be no question of what's happened. And it won't be that just the Christians, you know, the, the idea of the rapture or whatever. Yes, you know, everybody's going to know that. It's, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be no spin. Um, you know, the media can't go, well, this is just AI, kind of <laughs> world, you know, the war of the worlds, right? Um, it's you a note. Other half saying, oh, I bet on the long horse. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is why, you know, he goes into, you know, so that's verse, through verse 11, again, the, the day. It's not days, but one eternal day of, of, and so, you know, that's the end. But that's why, you know, after he goes through all this, who shall resist? And then we go in verse 12 here. Um now says the Lord your God, turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and wailing and with mourning. And so there's that, you know, that switch gears again. And as we do this in the great length, right? We, we fast and we mourn and we repent. Um, and then at Pascha, we rejoice, right? And so th there's going to be still that opportunity. Okay, the Lord's coming. You know, now's your last chance, right? <laughs> You still have an opportunity to, yes, Lord, I believe. The people who show up at 11. At the 11th hour, correct. <laughs> uh, you know, so there's, there's, you know, now's the time. <laughs> you know, turn to me with your heart and with fasting. Um, so and how, the, did, how, how did, so the, the Jewish, the is, is Israelites and all would, have known all of this mm -hmm. and then jesus talks about says the same thing mm -hmm. and then in the first when you read angela and then in this that poor fig tree yep. is there again but now the fig tree is going to get to bloom again even though god said you worthless fig tree <laughs> you're just going to wither right? right but I guess it's the, you know, the, their hearts were hardened and they couldn't hear. Correct. They couldn't hear because, yes. And, but some did. Some heard, some saw, and they said, oh, that's the fig tree of Joel. <laughs> it's right there. Quick question. Yes. Um, in regards to when he was talking about the, the armies that will go over the mountains in the black, um, in their shadows. And every face shall be as the blackness of a cauldron. Are we talking about like this? This is God's army, not, or is he talking about an opponent that is trying to? Well, he's talking, uh, he's talking about, one last hurrah before they get crushed. No, he's talking about the, you know the demons and whatnot on the day of judgment. You know those who 
those are, who are victorious will be part of the army. Those who are not will be crushed. So, and, and think of even, okay. think of even, you know, the, the, the demons when, when Lucifer fell, Michael rallied the angels in support of God and, and two thirds were on Michael's side and one third on the devil's side. And, and again, he play he created a place for them. Uh, and, you know, so he, it's talking about the day of judgment here. It's talking about the battle, the spiritual battle that will happen in, in, in the heavens, if you will. So, the, but I, I, I know what you're saying, Michael, because it, like, this is verse six, before then the people will be crushed. Every face shall be as black as a cauldron as warriors. They shall march quickly and they will climb the walls like men of war. So who are they? Are they? Because this is the, it starts with four about the horsemen and the, and they will pursue and. Yeah, that part's a little confusing because it's like whether or not I'm talking about the church militant or we're talking about the, the forces we will try to take one last shot at it. Um, it kind of gets we easily mixed up as to, who, to whom is it this addressing. We're actually going to have to go back to verse 2, about halfway through verse 2, about daybreak. A people both strong and great in number will be spread upon the mountains, the likes of whom have never been nor will come up after them not even for many generations. Before them is a consuming fire behind them, blah, blah, blah. Before them, the land is a paradise of splendor, but behind them is a desolate plain. No one will be able to escape them. The outward appearance. So that's kind of, I would say, the the, the angels are, he, the, the Lord is sending his angels as part of the, the day of judgment there. But they're like lining up and separating the paradise from the sheep and God. the goats right and they're the ones that are saying you know we're here we're protecting you're not going to get past us right. unless he says so right again it's all imagery it's giving us and when they and all and and though they fall by their arrows even so they will not be stopped so he's still talking about the church militant in that regards well, they're 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 he's again. We can't get too bogged down in the imagery. Um, you know, the, this isn't. Oh, I think we lost him. Um, it, we can't get too bogged down in the imagery. There he is. We can't get too bogged down in in because again, this is prophecy, and so we're talking about things in the future. We we're giving. We're trying to have a vision in front of us. So don't get too. You know it's a warlike explanation so but it, it 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 says you know it's it clearly says you know his that the lord will utter his voice before yeah. the face of his army for his army is numberless and the works of his words are mighty and so no matter what yeah. god wins correct and so it it's it's those angels and whomever else he chooses to say you know you're not you, you either come in because I say you come in, right? It's like the ultimate fortress. Yeah, I mean the the and the angels are just doing his will. So, but yeah, you're not going to defeat them. You're not going to defeat the Lord. And if it's dark and they're dark, you can't see them. Right. It, just like you can't see the demons. Yeah. Yeah. But this won't be, it won't be confusing as to who they belong to. Well, and, and yeah, and, and again, the day of judgment is not going to be a surprise in the sense of, was oh, is, is this it? Yeah. You know, you know, it's right. going to be pretty clear that that's exactly what, uh, what is happening. Um, you know, so again, so after all of this, we again, and again, that the, the end comes with the the word, much as the world began, it will end in the same way. Uh, and now says the Lord your God, turn to me with your heart. So again, we're fa fasting again, just like in Lent. And then 13, rend your heart and not your garments. Beautiful little line there. And then return to the Lord your God, for he is merciful and compassionate, long-suffering and plenteous and mercy and repents of evils. And we're going to 
do the comp line service and the salutation service. And one of the prayers in there is almost a direct quote from that passage right there, right? Um, and 17, between the How portion... About, Father, I have a question. Yep. Ch uh, verse 14. Who knows if he will return and change his mind, if he will leave a blessing behind him, even an offering and drink offering to the Lord our God. Is that a, a reference to communion? Yeah, it is. It is. Yeah, that's what I thought. Much like the, the bread and the wine in chapter one, kind of, you know, and oils. It's yeah. the sacraments, you know, right? So, yes. 17, between the porch and the altar, the priests of the altar ministering to the Lord will each be weeping and will say, O Lord, spare your people, do not give your inheritance to reproach. So if you look at the imagery here, right, the porch is the people, that's the nave, that's where all you are. The altar is here and the priest is in between, serving between the two. And what, is, what do I say right after communion? Save, O Lord, your people and bless your inheritance. Almost a direct quote from verse 17, right? So, uh, 19, uh, and, and then 18, verse 18, we kind of go back to again, um, you know, so we started with the, the day of the judgment, then we transition and say, okay, repent, now that you've, <laughs> you know that the day is coming, you, you have this time to repent, and then we go to 18 again, and it's like, this is what will happen after, for those who enter into the kingdom, you have all these positive things that come in. But the Lord was zealous for his land and spared his people. Uh, 19, and the Lord answered his people and said, Behold, I send you wheat, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied with them. I'll no longer make a reproach among the nations. So again, the sacraments right there, uh, communion, unction, chrismation, you name it. Um, it's all kind of there. So I said that chapter 2 is kind of broken into three sections chapter three is actually only chapter three for us um i believe even in western bibles there's no chapter three but we kind of separate it out because as you as we read this you'll kind of understand why in the hebrew scriptures it's just chapter two it's a continuation of chapter two and then chapter four is chapter three and there's only three chapters so don't be confused by that if you read another Bible, and you see it in Joel, that's kind of why it's there. But um, who wants to read the short chapter? After this, it shall come to pass. Yep. <laughs> oh, wait, did he, did he start? I didn't hear it. Yeah, sorry. No, you, you can do it. <clears throat> After this, it shall come to pass. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. And young men shall see visions. And in those days, I shall pour out my spirit on my servants and on my handmaidens. And I shall give wonders in the heavens and upon the earth, blood and fire and vapor and smoke. The sun, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and glorious day of the Lord coming to pass. And it shall be that whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion, and the Jerusalem shall be deliverance. As the Lord himself said, and there shall be proclamations of the good news to those who the Lord himself calls. So what does that sound like? Revelation. So that sounds like Pentecost as well, right? Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. But but yes, it's it's both, right? So the day of Pentecost. And and I want to we then let's move over to Acts 2. Okay, so it's going to be page 1472. And this is the day of Pentecost, so Acts 2.21. I'm sorry, 2.16, excuse me. And this is the day of Pentecost, right? So, and verse 16 there. But this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass 
In the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see visions. Your old men shall dream dreams. Now my men servants and my maid servants I will pour out my spirit in those days, and they shall prophesy. I will show wonders in heavens above the signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whoever calls the name of the Lord shall be saved. So almost word for word from Joel there. Does that mean there's going to be a second Pentecost? Yes, which is the day of judgment. So, but yes, it's because we, we experience it now within the church, right? We experience a taste of heaven in the church. We experience a taste of the kingdom. Um, and it's the things that are offered in, in the church. But, you know, all these things took place on Pentecost and they will take place in the last days as well in a in more full way. Um, and so in, in verse five here, and it shall be that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Excuse me. For in Mount Zion and Jerusalem shall be deliverance, as the Lord himself said. And again, remember, Mount Zion is the church, symbolic of the church. Shall be deliverance, as the Lord himself said, and there shall be proclamation of the good th news to those whom the Lord himself called. So we can always repent. We can always return to God. We can always return to the church. Um, you know, there's never a... Uh, a time while well, you've been gone too far, too long. Nope, you can always come back. Um, and the church is not just the Israelites, but all peoples, because again, on all my peoples, I'll, I'll send this. It's not just on Israel, it's on all peoples. So, um, kind of very clear uh, revelation of uh, the end times, but that, but that it were instituted on the day of Pentecost. So, okay, chapter four really chapter three, but for us, chapter four, we'll close out. Go ahead. Now you can do it, Neil. Help me. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> so behold, in those days, and at that time, when I bring back the captivity of Judah and Jerusalem, I shall also gather all the nations together and bring them down to the valley of Jehosh Jehoshaphat. And there I will enter into judgment against them on account of my people and my inheritance, Israel who are dispersed among the nations against those who divided my land, and who cast lots over my people and traded boys for prostitutes and sold girls for the wine they drank. Indeed, O Tyre and Sidon, and all the coasts of, of Philistia, what have, you, what have you to do with me? Are you, are you paying me back for a grudge you hold against me? If so, I shall return your retaliation swiftly and immediately upon your own head, because you have taken my silver and my gold and taken my precious possessions into your temples, and because you sold the sons of Judah and Jerusalem to the sons of the Greeks uh, in order to exile them far from their borders. Behold, I shall raise them up from the place where you sold them, and I shall return your retribution upon your own head. I will sell your sons and your daughters into the hands of the sons of Judah, and they will sell them into captivity to a far distant nation, for the Lord has spoken. Proclaim these things among the nations. Prepare for war. Arouse the warriors. Draw near and go up, all you men of war. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say, I am strong. Assemble together and join in all you nations round about. And in that place, gather yourselves together. Let the gentle be warlike. Let all the nations rouse themselves and come up to the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I shall sit to judge all the nations round about. Bring out the sickles for the harvest is ripe. Come in and tread the grapes for the wine presses full. The wine vats overflow for their wickedness is multiplied. The news resounded in the Valley of Judgment, for the day of the Lord is near in the Valley of Judgment. The sun and the moon shall come dark, and the stars shall withdraw their light, and the Lord shall cry out from Zion, and he shall utter his voice from Jerusalem. And the heavens and the earth will quake, but the Lord shall keep his people safe, and shall strengthen the sons of Israel. So you shall know that I am the Lord your God, the one dwelling in Zion and my holy mountain. And Jerusalem shall be a holy city, and no more will strangers pass through her. And it will come to pass in that day that the mountains shall drip sweetness and milk shall flow from the hills and all the brooks of Judah shall flow with water and a fountain shall flow out from the house of the Lord and it will supply water to the valley of, of Acacias. Egypt shall, be, shall, come a desolation, shall become a desolation and eat on the wilderness because of the wrongdoings against the people of Judah. Because of the innocent bloodshed in their land, but Judah shall be inhabited forever in Jerusalem unto generations of generations. And I shall avenge their blood and shall not let it go unpunished. The Lord shall dwell in Zion. Okay, so, you know, again, we can 
interpret or understand this to be that you know the restoration of Jerusalem after the deportation to Babylon, but uh, ultimately it's again more for us in, in the church that you know God protects us within the church. Um, you know the 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 demons that, that attack us are you know the the one the ones that he he's dealing with there, um, and <clears throat> notice now if we go to verse nine here, proclaim these things among the nations, prepare for war, rouse your warriors, draw near and go up, all you men of war, beat your plowshares into swords, and your pruning hooks into spears, um, like the weak say I'm strong, and so it's kind of like you know. We have to go into battle ourselves. We have to be in battle mode with the, the demons and our passions, our temptations. Um, you know, and, and we have to be on guard uh, to defend ourselves as well. Um, but within the church, there's you know sanctity and and uh, you know it, it then goes to thirteen. Bring out the sickles for the harvest is ripe. Come in and tread the grapes for the wine press is full. Um, and so what we experience, again, within the church is only going to be fulfilled in entirety uh, at the end of days. Um, so, you know, the, that for us, the chapter three um, that's there is, is really the, the main em emphasis there is why we kind of separated out uh, from chapter two. But um, you know, that's that's it. That's the book of Joel. It's kind of kind of short, but um, again, just reminding us and again it, 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 you mentioned the readings today were, were joel because you can see as we're entering great lent proclaim a fast proclaim so a fast are they? so <laughs> this last verse was the first one mm -hmm. it's like you read read them backwards yeah went in a circle so is that why it, it's done that way mm -hmm. so all the girding yourself is like Paul. I don't know what book it's in, but he's no. telling you know, put on the the put your hat, put the all your armor, armor on because, and it's like that. It's it's like the icon of Saint John of the Ladder, and the Ladder of Divine Descent. It's like I keep it in my kitchen. I look at it every day a lot, and the but it on that ladder who's at the top there's there are the demons not so many in the bottom but you get close to the top and it's the priest and there's like a bishop and there's one that is not diminished in color is like white and mm -hmm. and he's clearly going to get through well maybe um <laughs> but there's more demons the more you get mm -hmm. the closer you get the more demons there are right and so you have to be even more right if we're if we're already wall, wallowing in sin and and not being vigilant and not dealing with our sinfulness the devil doesn't have to work so hard he's like oh he, he's taking care of my business for me it's the ones that are battling and if we do if we go to battle without the proper armor if we go to battle without the proper uh, utensils you know weapons you're going to get defeated but but you know again if you're the if you're if you're just lounging around and you're not even on the one rung of the ladder <laughs> you don't look very tasty to the devil no it's like you get the closer you to get to god and that's you know like when you read the stories of the different this bishop and that saint and you know how people have to go through and there are some saints that get close to god and then they fall backwards and then they come back and mm -hmm. um but it's just it's just us mm -hmm. you know that's that's how we are but it i, I look at that a lot because i just get to think that no matter where you think you are you're probably right getting pulled off so the uh, ladder the same as the toll houses seems to me like it's the same it's a similar concept story. it's a similar concept yes yeah and and yeah I mean, is, the, is that toll house idea is similar to the towns of purgatory um kinda not not completely what um, did he say? toll houses are are they similar to purgatory 
kind of yeah kind of no purgatory you know again it's it's too defined by the roman church for us to really accept as as valid in any way shape or form but yeah i mean there's you know there and again it, it's kind of nebulous as to what what we're dealing with after death and and how we can be saved after death i mean so but yeah, the the ladder and, and the toll houses and all these concepts are they're more for us to understand that you know we need to work on things in this life because if if we're just completely absorbed by them in this life, that's what's going to get us in the life to come. You know, that's where, where God's going to say, you know, whatever He's going to say. But um, you know, that is the toll house. They accepted that as accept teaching in the author. No, no, there's no official the case of... acceptance of the toll houses in orthodoxy. Um, it's more of again a, con a conceptual thing um, that you know the fathers don't have never come to a, a consensus on. The church is not endorsed. It's neither. Um, it's not doctrinal in, in in that regard. So okay. But isn't the isn't the latter like I, I've tried reading John Climacus <laughs> Divine Ascent. I'm gonna try it again this time. Uh, I might have to wait till last year when I, next year when I'm not working. But um, it's the process of theosis, right? Of yes. Being that it's not you're not dead. This is your what you're doing in your life. And in that icon, you don't see like a whole family. Right. It's like you have to do your thing. Mm -hmm. You have to be responsible for you. And you get, you know, you might get plucked off, but you can start again. You can start over again. And maybe you just get to the second rung and you know, but at the end, you pray that. God will forgive you and pull you up all the way. Yeah, and and I mean to be clear, the latter divine ascent is is in, was written by a monk intended for other monks. Mm -hmm. You know that now th that doesn't give us an out. Well, I'm not a monk, therefore I don't have to work on these things. Right. But we have to work on it within our context of the world, not within the context of a monastery. But yeah, it's the idea is is you build on these things. And yeah, you're gonna fall. Um, or like you fast, and then you, but you're mean. But that doesn't do you any good, right? Right. And that's why you know, <laughs> it's like you make it a modern thing, you know. Well, that like the first week of the fast, a lot of people are like, oh, this is great. I'm doing just fine. It's no big deal. And then you get to the third week, and it's like, I see one more lunch. How, yeah, yeah. how, how am I going to make it to to Posh? <laughs> well, I really want to sell this person off. Right. But... <laughs> and that's what and and because you know again I, as I say when when we read about the temptation, Jesus fasts for forty days and then the devil comes. Mm -hmm. He didn't do it like halfway through the, the fast. Mm -hmm. He waited until his weakest moment, yeah. mm -hmm. and then this is why I say you know the first couple of weeks of Lent are no big deal. It's it's. You know the fourth, the fifth, the sixth week. That you know that's where the spiritual stuff comes in. That's where everybody's grumbling and upset with everybody and all these other things because they haven't eaten. They haven't, been, you know. So even, even, when, even when you know Jesus said to his three top guys, "I'm going to go pray. Just stay away." Mm -hmm. And three times he comes back and says, "I'm asleep." <laughs> <laughs> can't you just stay awake and it's like pretty much not um but it and i think that's there just to show us that yeah they're just they're just people yep. mm -hmm. they're just people and everybody you know and and Bryce well, could do it because he's perfect and he's god and, right. and mm -hmm. you know but he still loved them we're all just human yeah. but that's where you know um Uh, it was to show that even the chosen ones couldn't do it. So how yeah. how should we be expected to how, do that? You know that, that God is merciful and 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 all these things. You know, just okay, you fell, repent, and you're going to be okay again. But, um, so yeah. So as we enter into Lent, you know, you 
make your effort when you fall and your attitude isn't right or whatever it's going to be, whatever the, the temptation is, you know, okay, start again. Right. <laughs> get back up and move on. That's why Christmas doesn't mm-hmm. <laughs> we all think everybody that comes right before midnight and you know of course everybody is looking to see who comes before midnight <laughs> <laughs> so uh, i'm going to share something here real quick uh, that's one for those online and i handed this out to oh okay you can all see so again just kind of going through and it's a good resource here. So this is the Eastern Orthodox following the Septuagint. That's the symbol for Septuagint. <laughs> Roman Catholic Church following the Vulgate, the Latin Vulgate. It was translated by Jerome and then across the Masoretic text and uh, what is in most Western Bibles. Uh, and this is how it is. Obviously, the Torah is the same, also called the Pentateuch, uh, the five books. Um or Torah, meaning law, all that's the same. That's going to be normal. Um, and, and when we talk about Hebrew scripture, a term that you may hear is Tanakh, okay? So Tanakh is just three Hebrew uh, letters, T, Ta, for the Torah, okay? Um, the Na is the Nevi'im, which are the prophets down here, and the uh, the Zuketuvian, which are the, the readings. So when you go and, you know, as I said, the, the Torah is all the same. You get to the Ketuvian, and most everything is the same, uh, just named a little differently kings and, and kingdoms, uh, chronicles. Then we get to Ezra, and it's a little bit different across the board there. Get to Nehemiah, also a little bit different. Tobit and Judith, and, the, and it's not even in the Masoretic text. Esther is the same, and, and then the Maccabees, the historical books there. So we went through through almost all of that, uh, the first part of it at least. We went through all that already. Okay, so um, the, then the, you have the prophets and Nevi'im, and you have again Isaiah, Jeremiah, um, Ezekiel, and Daniel, the four major prophets. You will notice the the other books of Jeremiah, which are Baruch, Lamentations, and Epistle of Jeremiah, are only in ours and. The, the Catholics keep at least two of those uh, lamentations, whatnot. And then you get into the shorter minor prophets. And as I said, th- this is technically one book, all 12 of these, and they're all the same. Uh, ultimately, uh, you have 10 books not here that are over here. And I think it's uh, four books that are taken out over here from the Catholic um, Vulgate. But um, just so again, we understand you know, the scriptures, as I said, the Hebrew scriptures, we, we went through the law, we went through much of the the Ketuvim, that is the, the history of the writings. We've gone through some of the Nevi'im. As I said, your, your homework is now to read the rest of the prophets. Um, and we've gone through that. You kind of have a understanding of how to read the prophecies now. The last part really is this, uh, the wisdom writings, which are technically part of the Ketuvim. Um, and we haven't gone through them. We're not going to go through all of them. But I will start with Psalms, and if we can get to Proverbs, we'll do Proverbs as well. But the Psalms should also be read as one book. Yes, there's 151 in ours, 150 in the Western, but they should be read as one story. There's, yes, individual ones within them, but they should be read as one story. So that's how we are going to read them and understand them within that, those, that context, um, because it tells, again, the story a little bit of the history of the Jewish people. So, um, you know, and one of the best examples. Are we going to get a copy of this? I can give, I have one here. I can give it to you on, on Sunday if you want. Oh, thank you. Um, you know, one of the best examples I give is everybody knows the 23rd Psalm, right? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, blah, 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 blah. The 22nd Psalm, nobody knows because that's the one that talks about the crucifixion. Okay, my bones, uh, not a bone shall they break. Uh, they pierce my side, all those things. So, so here you have the story of the crucifixion and then the story of the resurrection. Okay, now if you don't read the story of the crucifixion, the resurrection doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Mm-hmm. So everybody says, you know, it's 23rd Psalm, we use that for funerals and things like that. Well, if you didn't go through the crucifixion, you shouldn't be reading about the resurrection, right? Mm-hmm. So um, 
So you'll see that when we go through the Psalms. Um, but you're going to get a, a, a foretaste of that because we're going to go through a lot of Psalms and, mm -hmm. and the Lenten period and Holy Week. So, yeah, it's a lot of readings. <laughs> I look forward to that. Come up and do some reading. Yes, if you want to read during Holy Week, during Lent, you don't have to chant. There's just a lot of reading. So mm -hmm. you can give the chanters a, a break uh, to rest their voices. And they get repeated on a Holy Saturday before the yeah. resurrection. So it's, um, I used to be able to do that. I can't do it anymore. But um, it, I found it absolutely wonderful because. It made me much more familiar and it was much more meaningful, you know, just reading it. Um, it, it makes a lot of sense and they are beautiful. I volunteer, Susan. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I've told Father before. I read a few readings. I, I used to do it all the time. It, it, it's a good opportunity and, and there's often many readers who so kind of go in rotation. So. Mm -hmm. um it's just uh holy saturday the the book of jonah if you want to meet me such me Ab 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 about thursday night details yeah thursday night I, I do a lot of the reading on thursday night yeah. Yeah, yeah i know you do <laughs> yeah. The readings. Wednesday is the water yeah wednesday is the unction yeah, right. service and on so. saturday morning bring your pots and pans yes mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Make that fast. Bring it. 